whether it's sickness, growing old, economic, physical, we all face different trials. We've all been given a different set of talents. We've all been given different ways in which we can share Jesus Christ with others. Whether it's friends we grew up with, whether it's at work, whether it's in our neighborhood, but in no place should we be those who bury what God has given us. His Lord said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make thee rule over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Well done. Faithful. Servant. Are we those who the Lord could say, well done. You were faithful with what I gave you. You were a servant for me. You served me. I was your master. You were my servant. And you were a faithful servant. He also that received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you that you are a hard man, reaping where you do not sow, and gathering where you have not screwed. And I was afraid. We find ourselves sometimes fearful. God's given me so much money. This is what I have. And now he calls me to give a portion to the local church. He calls me to take a portion and put it into a service. And I'm afraid. Are we afraid? to be faithful to God. Honestly, brothers and sisters, we should be afraid not to be faithful to God. We should be more fearful of disobedience to God than we should of how am I going to take care of myself and feed my family. You know, as I was leaving last night, I was talking to a group and I said, you know, because we were talking about what's going on in the world. I said, you know, if I go home tonight and my house is burnt down and I drive by my office and it's gone, what am I going to do? I'm going to say, Lord Jesus, I know you have a plan and I'm excited to see what you're going to do in my life with the new plan that you have for me. My children are well. My wife is well. Where do you want us to serve? We're so afraid to let go. You know, one of them looked at me and he said, when you started to tell that, I thought you were telling a joke. No, I'm not telling a joke. Are we being faithful with the things our Lord has given us? Are we? And I was afraid. Verse 25, and hid the talent in the earth. Look, there you have it as yours. His Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I sow not, and I gather where I have not strewn. You ought us therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own. You should have invested what I've given you, not buried in the ground. What are we doing? Are we investing the things God has given us into God's kingdom? Take therefore the talent from him 
and give it to him which has ten talents. For unto every one that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he has. And cast ye the unprofitable servant unto outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then he goes on with another parable. about those who cared for others. It makes me think of the parable of the Good Samaritan. Remember, you know, the priest walks by on the other side, the Levite walks by, but the lowly Samaritan, what does he do? He comes. He pours oil on the man's wound. He bandages him. He puts him on his own hand. He takes him to the inn. And he gives an open account to the innkeeper. He says, here, and whatever more you need, when I return, I will pay it. Open it. First, into God's kingdom. So where did Israel fall short? Let's turn to Malachi chapter 3. Last book of the Old Testament. Let's read verses 8 through 10 of chapter 3. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. So what had they done? They had not brought in their tenth part, right? Tithes means a tenth part. Now, does how does this apply to us today? It's not really clear, because truthfully, everything we have comes from God. Everything we have belongs to Him. But I think maybe we can at least get a standard here of, you know, what Israel was required to do should be at least what we're doing. A tenth part of what we earn should come in week by week. And those are our tithes. And in addition, we should have offerings that we come and we bring. Not first we pay our bills, right? You know, and then when we're done, we see what's left over. And then we decide, should I, you know, put some of it towards, you know, maybe set a little bit aside for uh, some amusement, going somewhere with the kids, save up for that new HDTV. And then there's a little bit left over in this. This I'll bring in on Sunday. We're doing it the wrong way. They were recalled first of our first fruits, of the first that we receive, we come and we bring it into the house of God. The first thing we do. You robbed me, but you say, where have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me even this whole nation. Bring you all your tithes in the storehouse, that they may be meet in my house, and prove me now, test me now, hear what says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. He's saying to them, test me. See if I won't provide for you. <clears throat> and perhaps the Lord is speaking to you this morning. Say, test me. Do you have the faith to trust God to first bring in your tithes and offerings to the Lord? And then, with what is left over, trust God that He will provide. This is what it means to be a faithful servant. We need to be faithful in all aspects of our life. Because truly, all that we have belongs to our Lord. 
Trust Him with your tithes and your offerings. Trust Him with what you first receive to put it into His kingdom. Because, you know, there's never, there's never the right time to get married. There's never the right time to have children. There's never the right time to bring in your part to God. There's always a reason why we put off these difficult decisions. Because it reveals where our heart is. Do we trust 